Hey guys, James here, and today we're going to talk a little bit about users with QuickBooks Online. And with QuickBooks Online, depending on the level of your subscription and everything, you can have up to five users if you're a Plus user, three users if you're an Essentials user, or 25 users if you're an Advanced user. So there's a lot of different options that QuickBooks Online provides you, and I'm going to talk specifically about the different user permissions that you can have with Essentials and Plus. Advanced has its own solutions and everything, and I may go over that in another video, but this is gonna be specifically geared towards users in Online and Plus. So when we come into a program to access your users, we're gonna to come to this gear icon and click Manage Users. When we do that, we can then click Add a User, and it's gonna ask us what type of user this is, and we've got four options here. We've got a standard user, so this is going to allow us to basically standardize and pick and choose what they have access to. And we'll go into that in a second. We also have a company admin. This is going to give us access to anything and everything. They can make changes to your company information, your billing information, mess with your customers, um, mess with your expenses. So this is really something that you only want your business owner to have access to. Um, if you have a very trusted office admin, then go ahead, get them access to this. But this is something that can give someone a lot of power and a lot of things that they can do. So we just want to be cautious with who we give this to because you don't want someone to accidentally screw over or even purposefully screw over your company um, because they've got too much access. When we go ahead and come down this way, we have reports only and time tracking only. And as I said, we've got three and five user limits on the other two. And these two down here aren't gonna go into those three and five limits. These are gonna be completely and totally separate. Um, so you can add as many of these as you want. And these are going to be people who can view your profit and loss, your balance sheet. So maybe you've got a partner that really doesn't need to be active in the company, but you still want him to be able to view reports from your company file. That would be a good reports only user. Um, the other thing that you have is time tracking only. So if you've got employees and you want them to track their time, they don't have to have a normal login. They can just track their time through this time tracking option. Um, which will allow them to clock in, clock out, say what job they went to, stuff like that. Um, do keep in mind that there's plenty of uh, external apps out there that are going to do this for you and do it better, honestly. So if you really want detailed time tracking like location tracking and stuff like that, do look into other external applications that are designed specifically for that like T-Sheets, um, if you're just looking for time tracking or if you're looking for scheduling, um, there's programs out there like that, um, depending on your industry and everything. So do kind of keep your eyes open there, um, as this is going to be very minimalistic things and they're going to specifically be putting in their time. So they're going to say, oh, well, I started at 8 and ended at 5.30. But what if they didn't start until 9 and got off at three, you've really got no way to check that. So ultimately, though it's an add-on cost, these outside apps are a much better solution for time tracking. Just to help make sure that you don't have anyone really come after you and try to rip off the company by claiming more time than they actually worked. Now coming back up this way to the standard user again, I told you how there are many different options here. So we're going to go ahead and go into that. Um, and when we select standard user, we'll click next down here like I just did. And it's going to give us all of these items here. Um, so it's going to give us all access. And they can do everything with your customers and sales and your vendors. And this means they can do everything listed here. So they can add, edit, and delete your employees. So if you're doing payroll and stuff, they'll have access to do that. Um, they can change your preferences in QuickBooks, change your customizable forms. They've got almost the same thing as a company admin does, um, but they don't really have access to do the billing and stuff like that. Um, now you can get them access to do that, but again, just be cautious. This is honestly what I would recommend using for your office admin. 
if you've got a trusted office admin, this gives them plenty of access so that they can do anything and everything they need to do because they can do the sales tax, they can do the invoices, they can add your employees, they can delete the employees, um, they can add and edit accounts, anything like that, but they're not going to be able to mess with billing or do things like that. If you give them no access, then they literally have no access. Um, so it's probably not someone that you really want to add in here, um, unless you are temporarily removing them and modifying their user access just for a period so that they either took a leave of absence or something like that. That's really the only reason to use this none. Now this limited here is going to let you customize what we have in the all. So when we click on this limited and we click on customers, it's only going to let you do things for customers. So you'll be able to mess with your currencies and your exchange rates if you have multi-currency. You'll be able to do sales tax and adjust sales tax, um, view your sales tax filing histories and file your sales tax. Um, view registers and reports for customers, add and edit customers, products, services, stuff like that, um, fill out timesheets for your employees, receive payments from the customers, um, create statements to send to the customers, enter charges and credits, stuff like that, and create your estimates, your invoices, sales receipts, all that type of stuff. So this is something that if you've got a salesperson, this is the perfect area for them to have access to. Because the salesperson, they're just gonna be making sales. They're not really gonna be worrying about expenses or anything. Um, so you really don't need to worry about them having access to that because they're not gonna need to print checks. They're not gonna need to make bills or purchase orders um, or make them billable to a customer. Um, you don't need to delete quantities on hand or add or edit the accounts there because they won't need access to that. Um, and the biggest thing there is they won't be able to see your banking information and anything like that about what you make ultimately after expenses come out. They're only going to be able to see that, oh, you had $10,000 in sales. So you had $10,000 in sales. Well, they don't know what your expenses were, so they can't come at you and say, well, you made $5,000 last month after expenses, so why can't I have a raise? So this is really for your salespeople here. Now, if you've got someone who kind of assists your um, office admin or something like that, um, then you may want to get them access to both of these here because they'll be able to do everything in the customer's area, plus they'll be able to um, do AR reports and AP reports, they'll be able to enter bills, they'll be able to pay bills and write checks, um, enter cash and credit card purchases, everything like that, um, but they're not going to be able to see anything along the lines of your bank register or mess with your chart of accounts or anything like that. So again, it's just kind of a little stops gap there to make sure that they don't have access to too much. Now, if you have specifically an AP department, so you're a larger company, you probably have 20, 30, 40 employees, and you have one or two people who specifically focus on entering bills and paying bills, but they don't do anything with the customers, then it's probably a good idea just to get them access to the vendors because they're not going to be able to go in and view the bank registers um, anything like that, but they're also not going to be able to do invoices or anything there because they don't need access to do that. They're just going to handle the accounts payable side or the AP side of your business. So they'll be able to enter the bills, they'll be able to enter the cash and credit card, the pay bills, anything like that that is required for AP. So if you have people who focus just on sales or just on AR, then giving them access to just this customer's area will be more than enough for them to really use there. If you have people who just do your AP or your accounts payable and pay the bills and enter all the expenses and stuff, then giving them access just to the vendors would be great. If you've got an office admin, then giving them all access here to a standard user will give them basically your company admin without giving them those final little things for billing and access to your QuickBooks payment features where they can change the bank account that the information goes into, stuff like that. Um, 
or if you've got something that really, someone who helps the office admin, then get them access to both of these. Now beyond this, you have more features. <laughs> so as I said, it gets complicated. So if you want them to add, edit, or remove users, you're able to say yes, no, or view only. Um, so an office admin, you may want to have access to that. But anyone else other than the owner and the office admin, you may not want them to do that. Um, you may want them to only view, or you may say you don't want them to see it at all. Then they won't even be able to access it. Um, do you want this user to edit the company info? If you don't want them to do that, then say no. This is going to be changing your EIN, changing your address, changing your phone number, changing your email address. So again, if you've got a trusted office admin staff, perfect person to do this as long as you trust them. If you don't, then say no. If they're just a salesperson, they don't need access to this. Beyond that, you've got, do you want them, this user to manage subscriptions? This one I always kind of recommend just having the owner do because this is gonna be your QuickBooks online subscription. So they'll be able to upgrade you, downgrade you, add on payroll, add on other features, stuff like that. And it's not really something that you wanna give access to someone unless you really trust them. Um, beyond that, beyond just trusting them more than anything, um, if for some reason they leave or for some reason they do something like that, then or they're fired um, for whatever reason, and they've got access to this, they can downgrade your subscription um, from plus to essentials and remove some of the features that you have there. Um, and that can mess you up a little bit. So I just caution you only to let the owner do this and be careful when you're messing with these settings because you wanna make sure that you're choosing the right stuff. That's the big reason to talk with a certified pro advisor when you're setting up QuickBooks and when you're using programs like this because certified pro advisors know what's going on and how to set everything up to best work for you. So please make sure that you are thinking through everything and using your resources to make sure that you're set up right, to make sure that you're protecting your company because this is a lot of information that can really make or break your company. So work with people, whether it's someone local, whether you reach out to someone like me, to talk with us about how to handle this um, as we are going to guide you down the right path. Um, as always, it's been a pleasure. Let me know if you've got any questions or reach out to me and I'll be happy to talk with you and walk you through everything. Have a good day. Bye.